Many of us are awakening to the idea that the tribulation approaches and start to wonder what will happen to us. Will we survive the tribulation or will we be thrust into the spirit world? And if so, will we be reincarnated during the millennial age? Will we get to see the kingdom of heaven at all? In this class, we're going to revisit chapter 53. The time of judgment has arrived. And we're going to take a closer look at verses 28 through 30 in the section called the purification of humanity through the judgment. And we're going to look at the different paths that humanity will take during the tribulation, breaking humanity down in five general groups. Those who have always been obedient to the law, talking about those rules and regulations set down by Moses. In the book of Exodus chapter 20 through 23 and in the books of Deuteronomy, Numbers and Leviticus. And we'll look at those who have not been obedient to the law. Breaking it down into two groups. Those that will keep the law once they realize that the tribulation has started and those that will never keep the law. And then on in verse 30, we'll look at those who have fulfilled their life missions, those love missions that we signed up for before we ever came to dwell here on the earth. We'll look at the outcomes of those that have completed those missions. Some will be returning to earth. Others will not. Again, we're pulling this information out of the Third Testament of the Bible, chapter 53, verses 28 through 30. You can find a link to the Third Testament of the Bible in the description of this video. There's both an audio and a PDF version that you can download to your electronic device. So let's look at verse 28. It says, And what shall become of my children who have always failed before my law? Talking about those who have never kept the law before. Truly to those who slumber without wishing to analyze, without studying my lessons, the trials shall come like a whirlwind that makes them fall. Now these are the people who have never kept the law before. But once the tribulation is started and they realize that the hour of judgment has been announced, they will run toward the law. These are people who would otherwise want to do good, but just haven't gotten around to it yet. The trials of the tribulation will convince them to keep the law. Like those who learn to keep the law even before the tribulation ever started, it is the persecutions the trials, the hazards, the hunger, the humiliations, along with the hardships unique to the tribulation will help to convince these individuals to learn and keep the law. Those rules set in place to preserve humanity. We have to understand this was the purpose of the law anyway, to help humanity to survive the tribulation. That's why it seems as though we haven't been held accountable to breaking the laws up until now. People have broke the laws, including the Sabbath day, but no harm has come to them. At least that's the way it seems. Well, when the tribulation starts, they're going to wish they had been practicing those laws the whole time because learning to live within those laws, the laws of the Bible, does not come easy for a humanity who have been taught all of their life to reject those laws. Our schools, even from kindergarten in the first grade, taught us to reject the Father in heaven and embraced the pagan gods of the world. They had us drawing pictures of Christmas trees and taking them home and pasting them on our refrigerators and doing Easter egg hunts and setting up Halloween as one of the best days of the year. 
our hospitals. They taught us to take the faith out of the father as our healer and set up man as our healer. Our courthouses taught us to be obedient to man and his laws. Forgetting about the father and his laws and our churches taught us to reject those laws altogether. I believe that if it were not for these institutions, a man would keep the law in the first place. I believe that humanity wants to keep the law. Well, one good thing that will come out of the tribulation is that many will learn to do just that. But what about those who have always kept the law? Verse 28 goes on to say, while those who have obeyed my teachings it shall come as an encouragement to compliance, like a beautiful prize awarded by God. Like those who spent all of their time preparing for final exams. Even though they may have spent many days looking out the window at those that were playing. It is during those final exams and after those final exams that those individuals are going to be happy having done well on the test. Again, the laws were written to help us to survive the tribulation. So having kept the law, these individuals will be prepared. They will know what to do. And while they will be seeing other people struggling around them, having hardship after hardship, because they don't know what to do, how to be clean, how to obey the Father, how to treat their neighbor. Having known these rules will be like a beautiful prize awarded by God. The laws will come to them as a huge blessing. Because of the laws, they will escape many of the trials of the tribulation. They won't have to go through nearly as much as the rest of the world. But what about those who will never keep the law? They haven't kept the law up until this point. And when the hour of justice is announced, they will still reject the law. They're going to run towards man and do what man tells them to do. Verse 29 says, in this time, those not prepared to renew themselves shall know the greatest bitterness and shall be raised from the earth losing thereby a precious opportunity to atone for their faults and reconcile these individuals who will reject the law and will not try to be obedient to the father and his wishes and his rules his commands his mandates his statutes his ordinances and precepts these are the individuals who will know the greatest bitterness of the tribulation. They will get the worst parts of the tribulation. Wars, famines, diseases, as well as an uprise from the elements. Hurricanes, volcanoes, biting locusts. Those individuals who will never embrace the law, the never lawyers, they're going to take the worst parts of the tribulation. They're going to be harmed the most. But then well, look what happens to them. They shall be raised from the earth, meaning they're going to die. They're going to be thrust into the spirit world. They have no chance of surviving the tribulation even after they've gone through a lot of hardships, they're still going to lose their lives, losing thereby a precious opportunity to atone for their faults and reconcile. See, this is one of the main purposes of the tribulation. This is why it includes so many torments and so many pains and so many troubles. That pain is what atones us. We're purified through pain. 
cleansing us of many of the faults counted against our spirit. Things that we have done wrong in this lifetime and even in previous lifetimes. These individuals won't have the opportunity to make up for those faults in the flesh. So what does that mean? That means they will have to make them up in the spirit world. So even have to go on through the greatest bitterness here on earth, they still have to go into the spirit world and face their conscience. Being in darkness alone, only with your conscience, who is constantly reminding you of your bad deeds. That is hell. And it doesn't appear as though these people will be allowed to come back to earth. So some of these people will spend the thousand years in hell. These are the people that's talked about over in Revelations chapter 20 verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Many of these people won't get to see the kingdom age at all. They will spend a thousand years making up for their faults. That's one of the main reasons it's important to survive the tribulation and cleanse your spirit in the flesh. Like I said, going up against your conscience is hell. That's what we've heard about, that fire of hell. That's the conscience. You remember, you are separated from your flesh. Your body is not feeling any pain. That fire that you're feeling is on your spirit. And is described as the most intense fire imaginable. But if we can make reconciliation in the flesh, we don't have to worry about that. So we see the difference between those that keep the law and those that don't, those that will and those that won't. But is that all there is to it? Merely being obedient? What about our life missions? What about those love missions? What about the job that we were sent down here to the earth to do in the first place? Keeping the law doesn't pass the dead man test, meaning that a dead man can keep the law. A dead man doesn't break the Sabbath day. He doesn't eat of unclean animals. He doesn't tell lies. He doesn't steal. He doesn't commit adultery. Keeping the law is a minimum. If we want to excel here on earth in the flesh, we have to fulfill our love mission. We have to do our job. That would pass the dead man because a dead man can't fulfill his love mission. Whatever that mission would be. That contract made between the father and your spirit man. You have to have a body in order to fulfill that mission. You have to have a motive force. You can't do it while you're dead. So what about those who have fulfilled their missions? Looking here in verse 30, it says, in contrast, those who pass from this mansion to the spiritual mansion, with the peace and satisfaction given by a duty fulfilled, feel illuminated by my light. These are the individuals that will go on into what's called the spiritual world. Where all of those individuals who have finished their love missions dwell. See, coming back here to earth is just another opportunity for you to cleanse your faults and reconcile for the wrongs that you have done and to complete your love mission. But once you've done all of that and completed all of that, you can go on to the higher mansions mentioned in the Bible. 
You don't have to keep coming back here to earth. The valley of tears, pain. You don't have to keep going through humiliations and troubles, suffering hunger, and illnesses. Those individuals who have completed their missions can go on to the higher places where you'll find people like Abraham and Elijah, Moses. You could go on to do bigger and better things. You don't have to have the limitations of humanity. But verse 30 goes on to say, and if they are among those who must reincarnate again, I will prepare them for their return to human life so that they may be brought clean again into life with greater spirituality and greater wisdom. So if for some reason these individuals have to come back down here to earth, it will be to do greater things, greater spirituality and greater wisdom. These will be the future Moseses, the future Elijahs. They will be the elevated spirits come back to help humanity through the kingdom age. See, our father is a God of wisdom. He's not a God of ignorance. He wants us to know stuff. And that's why he gave us his word. So many books of information teaching us. He wants us to be prepared and not be surprised. But there are many out there who have spent all of their life trying to be as ignorant as they can. And when they find out that they have succeeded, they always wonder why everybody else didn't work so hard at it as they did. They want to act like everyone is just as ignorant as they are. But the truth is out there, including the third testament of the Bible, from which this information comes. Again, look for a link in the description of the video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button if you've gotten something out of this video. May our Father in heaven bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.